Okay, we're going to jump into lesson 2.5, which is compound inequalities. Um, and compound inequalities are kind of similar to compound sentences in that they include uh, two parts. So you can see the definition here. Okay, it says an inequality statement with at least two inequality symbols. Um, and we have two different types of these compound inequalities. The first one is going to be an and compound inequality, and let me tell you why. So for this type of compound inequality, we have two constraints. So in this case, they're showing us x has got to be less than or equal to 1, and x has also got to be greater than negative 2. Well, we can come up with a number that will satisfy both of those constraints, right? It'll satisfy this first constraint, and it'll satisfy this second constraint. So let me show you how we put this on a graph. So it says x is less than or equal to 1. So I'll we'll zoom it in a little bit here. So we're going to go uh, less than or equal to 1. So that's going to move me to the left here. And then remember the other constraint over here was that x has got to be greater than negative 2. So if I have x is greater than negative 2, that would be an open circle and greater than would move me in that direction. And we can see what's going to happen here is that this graph is going to connect in the middle here. And all these numbers in between would be solutions to both of these. They would satisfy both of these constraints. For example, let's pick out a number, right? We can pick out any of these numbers. Let's just pick out the number zero here, right? So if I had the number zero, all right, let's just say x equals zero. Right, well, x equals 0, that would be less than or equal to 1. So that would satisfy this constraint. And x would be greater than negative 2. Right, so it would satisfy both of those constraints. And so that's why it's an and compound inequality. Um, and let's see, you might have noticed how they write this. They write it a little bit differently over here. Okay, so they've got x is less than or equal to 1, which we can see. Right, and then you got to read it backwards here, kind of in this direction from right to left, okay, x is greater than negative 2. So they wrote that half of it backwards, right? But you can see that x is in between these two numbers, just like we have all these solutions that are in between our two points on the graph here. The other type of compound inequality that we have is our or compound inequalities. Okay, our or compound inequalities. And that's because if we come up with a solution for this type of compound inequality, we have two constraints. Let's take a look at the example they gave us. All right, x is greater than or equal to 3, or x is less than negative 1. When I come up with a solution for one of these, it's either going to be a solution for this first constraint, or it's going to be a solution for the second constraint. But it can't be a solution for both. And let's see what it looks like with some numbers here on a graph. So we've got x is greater than or equal to 3. So that would be a closed circle at 3, and greater than would be to the right or x is less than negative 1, so that would be an open circle here, and less than would be to the left. Okay. And so if I find a solution for this, like let's say we pick out the number 4, right? Okay. So 4 is a solution for this half, right? For x is greater than or equal to 3, but it's not a solution for this half. Right? So when we find our solutions for these compound inequalities, this type of compound inequality, it's either going to be one or the other. So that's why this is an or compound inequality. So again, we have our and compound inequalities, where a solution is in between two numbers. And then we have our or compound inequalities, where it's going to be outside of one of these numbers. Okay, and I'll make a note here. In between... And this is going to be outside. All right, so let's take a look at these on the graph here. So we can see this is going to be an and compound inequality for this first one that they're giving me here because x is in between two numbers. And so I'll just go ahead and graph this like I normally would. It's going to be an open circle at negative 1. Remember, because we don't have the or equal to bar there, it's going to be an open circle at negative 4. And then we know since x is in the middle, my graph must connect in the middle. So all those numbers in between negative 1 and negative 4 would be solutions. Sliding over to letter B. I don't like letter B because they wrote 
the numbers here, five and one, in the wrong order, right? Usually we, we read things where the smaller number would be on the left, right? One, two, three, four, five as we go, except they put it backwards. They put the bigger number on the left and the smaller number on the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that around. Okay, I'm gonna flip that around and that means I'm also gonna flip my inequality symbols Okay, to keep everything even here. So those two things are the same, right? But one of them is just a little bit nicer because now we have one on the left, bigger number on the right. And now we can go ahead and graph it here. So open circle at one, close circle at five. X is in the middle, so my graph must connect in the middle there. And then we get to letter C here. And this is gonna be an or compound inequality. We can tell because it literally says or right there. So I can graph that. The first part says x is less than negative three. So open circle and going to the left. X is greater than or equal to two. So close circle and going to the right. So if I find a solution for one of these, it's gonna be a solution for one half or the other half of this. And then sliding to letter D, same idea here. Okay, so this graph should open out, right? Or opens out. So x is less than or equal to four, so that's a closed circle on four, less than is to the left, or the other option is x is greater than or equal to seven, so closed circle and going to the right, and our graph is gonna look like that. Take a look at a couple of these word problems here. This first one says all real numbers that are less than negative four or greater than or equal to negative one. So we can see right off the bat We've got this word or here, right? So this should be an or compound inequality. So I'm basically gonna have to set up two separate constraints here. So the first part says all real numbers that are less than negative four. So X is less than negative four, or X has to be greater than or equal to negative one. So X is greater than or equal to negative one. And so then we get our two constraints there and we can put them onto the graph. So we're gonna go ahead and X is less than negative four. So open circle at negative four and going to the left. And the other option is X is greater than or equal to negative one. So close circle there and going to the right. And then we can slide over to letter B. And this one says all real numbers that are greater than four and less than seven. So right off the bat, we see this one has the word and in it. So we should expect X to be in the middle here. Okay, it says all the numbers that are greater than four. So I'm reading this part backwards. X is greater than four and less than seven. So please notice when you write these and compound inequalities where X is in the middle, the symbols are always facing the, the same direction, right? They're always gonna be facing the same direction. They should never be facing different directions, okay? So you'll never have something that looks like this. Okay, so you won't have anything that looks like that where the symbols are facing opposite directions. And then we can go ahead and put this part on the graph here. Okay, so we've got uh, seven. And we've got four. Oop, and these should be open circles, right? And then their graph connects in the middle. All right, let's check out a couple here. They want us to write the inequality. It says write an inequality that is represented by the graph. All right, so our graph is connecting in the middle here, so we should expect X to be in the middle. Remember, symbols are always going the same direction. These are filled in dots, right? Filled in dots here, so we should have the or equal to bars. We've got eight on the right, that's the upper constraint. Four on the left, that's the lower constraint. And that's all we need for our inequality. Sliding over to letter B, same idea, the graph connects in the middle. So X should be in the middle. Right. Symbols are going the same way. We've got an open circle here where the three is, but we've got a closed circle where the negative one is. So I need to put that or equal to bar there. And then I have negative one on the left. Sliding to letter C. Uh, for this one, we can see the graph is opening out, right? So this is gonna be an or 
compound inequality. So basically two separate pieces here. The first one says x is less than negative 3. And the other option is or x can be greater than 0. And then similarly on letter D, again, it's opening outward. So I'm going to have or. First option, x is less than or equal to negative 6, right? Because it's a filled in dot there. Or x is greater than negative 3. All right, let's go to the next page and solve a couple of these. Okay, first part, they're going to give me a word problem here. It says an entertainment service charges around $200 per event. The company allows you to exceed this price by 120 or go under it by 50. Okay, so we've got 200, which is usually what we're at, but we can go over by 320, which means that the max I can go to is, or we can go over by 120. So that means the max that I can go to is 320. And then we can go under by 50. So that means the lowest I could go to is 150. And we can hit those numbers, right? So X is basically our amount, which we're using for X here, can be in between 320 and 150. And it can hit those numbers. That's why I'm using the or equal to bars there. It says give two examples of costs that would not be allowed. Well, that's anything outside of this. So something like 321 would not be allowed. Another option would be anything lower than 150, so 149 would not be allowed. Let's go ahead and solve some of these. So when we're solving our AND compound inequalities, remember our AND compound inequalities where X is in the middle here, um, we're just going to go ahead and use uh, our inverse operations, but there's kind of like three sides here. So there's the middle, there's the right, and there's the left. Right, so we whatever we do, we've got to do to all three sides. So as I go start to work through this, if I want to get x by itself in the middle here, right now it's got this positive 1 next to it. I'm going to subtract 1 from the middle, from the right, and from the left. Okay, and so then that, what's going to happen is x is just going to be by itself in the middle. And then we're going to have 2 on the right and negative 4 on the left. And then we can go ahead and put this on the graph. Open circle here. Close circle where 2 is. And then our graph is going to connect in the middle. And so then if you slide over to our or compound inequalities, right? These ones are the or compound inequalities because they say or right there. You basically solve this like two separate inequalities. So almost like two separate problems, right? First, we'll solve this one on the left. Then we'll solve this one on the right. And then we'll go ahead and graph them. So uh, for this problem here, right? All we'd have to do is divide by five. I get x is less than or equal to negative six. Or over here, I would subtract 10, and I get x is greater than negative 3. And so then onto the graph here, close circle at negative 6, going to the left because it's less than, open circle at negative 3, going to the right because it's greater than, and so we can see this is an or because it's opening out. All right, let's solve a couple more here. This is letter A. So we've got X in the, in the middle here in between our inequality symbols. So we want to get it by itself in between. So I need to get rid of this negative 9. So I'm going to start by adding 9. That's going to leave me 6X is less than uh, 18 and greater than negative 6. Then I divide by 6 in the middle. Divide by 6 on the right, divide by 6 on the left, and I get x is less than 3 and greater than negative 1. And then onto the graph here. Filled in. Oh, no, not filled in, right, because these don't have the or equal to. And we're connected in the middle. Let's slide over to letter B. Uh, same idea here, right? A couple ways we can start this. Most of us will start this with distribution, although that's probably not the most efficient way to do it, 
but I'll go ahead and start that way because I bet most of you will. And so we're going to end up with uh, 2x minus 8 is less than negative 14 and greater than negative 24. And now we're trying to get x by itself in the middle, so I'm going to add 8 to the middle, to the right, to the left. 2x is less than negative 6 and greater than negative 16. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. I get x is less than negative 3 and greater than negative 8. Onto the graph, connecting in the middle. Remember, if I'm ever going too fast, you can always pause the video and slow things down if you need to. Let's go to letter C because it's got a really tricky part. It looks simple here, so all we're going to do is divide by negative 5. But you got to remember, when you divide by a negative, even with compound inequalities, that's going to flip your inequality symbols. So I have x. I'm going to flip this the other direction. is now greater than negative 4 and flip this the other direction, less than or equal to positive 1. Again, we have that setup where I have a bigger number on the left and a smaller number on the right. I don't like that, so I'm going to flip this whole thing around. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it like this. x, I'm going to put 1, and negative 4. I'm flipping that around, and that means I have to flip my symbols as well. Notice that the or equal to bar was close to 1, so I kept the or equal to bar close to 1, right? And then we can put this onto our graph here. So closed circle at 1, open circle at negative 4, connecting in the middle. And then finally, letter D here. It's an or compound inequality. Right, so we're going to solve this like two separate problems, essentially. We're going to first solve this one on the left, then we'll solve the one on the right, and then we'll put them on the same graph. So here we go. Subtract 2, subtract 2. I get 3x is less than 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is less than 2. Or over here, I'm going to start by subtracting that positive 3. That gives me negative x is less than negative 5. I got to divide by a negative 1 here to get rid of that negative sign. And when I divide by a negative, I flip my symbol. Negative divided by a negative is a positive 5. And now I can go ahead and put this onto the graph. x is less than 2, open circle, going to the left. Or x is greater than 5, open circle, going to the right. All right, thanks for watching.